Hi Flosstube, it is Helen D. I am back with another tutorial. Uh, it's been a while, so hopefully I have everything set up in a way that you can see them. Um, today I'm going to show you another pillow finish. How I do one that has like a little peak of fabric. And I like to do mine so it's kind of folded over. Um, and then a panel. And usually I do some kind of decorative stitch. And I'm hoping I can use pom-pom on the one I have. Well, once it's together, we'll see if I have one that's the right color. So the piece that I'm finishing today, this is a Bent Creek. It's a newer release. It's a new release of an older chart called Chick on an Egg. <clears throat> I went through all of my fabrics and I had a hard time finding any that matched. So what I found, I found a strip of a jelly roll. Uh, and then I found this little piece of scrap that's like three inches wide. So they're not really going to work on their own, but I'm, I'm making them work. And then the back I'll just kind of piece together. So I've ironed my piece and I did iron on some interfacing on the back. Typically I use whatever I have. If I have the really inexpensive 99 cent a yard stuff, I'll use that. Um, sometimes when I make project bags, I like to use a thicker one for my project bags. It's Pellin 950F. It's a little thicker weight. And if I have a project bag that I have a scrap, I save the scrap and I use it for these. So I ironed that on. I'm trying to minimize trips to the ironing board, which is on the other side of the room. I cut a piece of that jelly roll, just I knew it would be long enough. And then I cut a piece of that other random strip of fabric, again, that I knew was at least as, as tall as my piece. So I've decided that I want this blue fabric to be the one that's up against cat hair. So I take my fabric and typically, well, we'll start with this. We'll start with the cutting. You weren't quite where I need you to be. When I do a pillow finish, I like to leave three quarters of an inch around each side of my design because that way I sew with a quarter inch seam. That leaves me about a half an inch. If I'm doing one with a little fabric, I leave an inch on that side. I know on this one, I want my fabric to be on the right side. So I'm going to cut three quarters of an inch on the top side and bottom and one inch on the other side. So there's my one inch. And then sometimes it gets adjusted as we go. Three quarters. Three quarters, three quarters. This one was easy because it had a nice square border and makes it easy to cut. So three quarters and one inch. Typically when I take my fabric that's going on the inside, I will cut it to be two inches and then I fold it in half so that it gives me a one inch strip. This one, I just left it as is. It's, it was four inches. It's now a two inch strip. It doesn't really matter. I just try and save fabric. Um, so I'm going to lay this down. And I want to figure out how much space I want in between. It's really easy on Ada because you can count, count the holes. Um, so I kind of want it kind of tight. This is going to end up, that's four Ada holes out if I do it right there. So I'm going to see if I do four Ada holes, I'm going to flip it over and I'm actually going to trim it right even with my fabric. My guess is it's now about three quarters of an inch. Uh, let's see, just about. It's a little thicker on the bottom, so I may have to trim it a little more. 
So now when I lay this out, it's directly with the edge of my fabric. It actually needs to go out a little more. I like it to be even with my fabric so that then I can just sew right up the edge and not have to worry about it. There, mine was a little uneven. So now I'm going to take this and just do a little seam just right up the edge. And I kind of stay right to the, like an eighth of an inch. I go a little looser here because I'm going to cover that seam with my next panel. Uh, I'm using my zipper foot. The reason I'm using that is because on my machine, that is my clear foot. Um, my regular foot is not see-through. And I want to be able to kind of see where I'm putting this. So now that is on there and I like doing them this way because it takes out some of the bulk, right? Like you're not now going to fold this over and then fold another one over. It just kind of is on there and it's its own little piece. Um, and I know that my edge is nice and straight. So now I'm not going to worry about these things yet. I'm going to take that other piece of scrap fabric. Um, again, that I just knew was big enough and hold that down. And this one I'm going to sew actually with the stitched piece on top. And the reason I'm doing that is that way I can see the line that I stitched and make sure I'm just enough to the left of it that when I fold my fabric back, it will all be covered up. So now I'm going to just sew this on. This one probably will have a full quarter inch seam. And I have a brother sewing machine. It is not fancy. I've had it for a long time. It's given me no problems. So now, when I fold this back, you can't even see it. So here on the back, this first seam, that's where I did just the blue. And then I did the next one a little over so that when I fold them open, you don't see either seam. So now I am going to go just give this a quick press. So now I will kind of trim this up and I'll go by my cutting board and square it off. This one, because it was a jelly roll, I kind of know that my other end was already two and a half inches, so it was pretty even. So there's that. So there's my front. Now I'm going to do a decorative stitch. You don't need to. Um, you could put buttons here uh, if you wanted to before you sewed the second piece on. You could tuck a piece of rickrack in there and kind of layer it up so you'd have fabric, rickrack, and then fabric. Um, it just kind of depends on the look you're going for. Um, so I'm going to do, sometimes I do a herringbone. This one was a herringbone along the bottom. Today I'm just going to do a cross. I like to use 
sulky thread for these because I have it. Um, if you don't have it, don't go out and buy it specially for this. You could, I wouldn't use one strand, like I wouldn't use sewing thread or one strand of DMC. You need something thick enough that it's going to show. So a couple strands of DMC, maybe a pearl cotton if you have some of that kicking around. Um, but this sulky 12 weight I think is perfect. I think it's meant for hand embroidery, so. All right, so I'm not gonna measure this other than I know that I want my hem to be a quarter of an inch and I want I don't want my X to be cut off so I am going to take my giant ruler and just make sure I start it so that my first X is gonna be I'm gonna go a quarter and then like two eighths And I'm just kind of, I'm going to have to come up from the bottom, but I'm just kind of getting a hole in there so then I can eyeball it from the back. I just tied a couple knots. So I'm going, I usually, I try to go about a quarter inch on each side. And again, I'm just eyeballing. And if they don't look right, just pull it out, do it again. Um, like that one right there is probably not high enough. It, was, it would have been a little wide. So I'll just pull that one out. The hard part's re-threading the tiny needle. You could measure if you wanted to. You could easily do each one um, with a ruler, but I'm trying to save time so I just kind of eyeball it. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this so that you can see it, but I can still see it. And my eyes are not the greatest. So there's one X. And I'm just going to come up a bit. When I get to the top, I'll try and make sure that I'm also not going to get cut off. I thought about sewing some buttons in while I did this, but... I didn't want to overdo it. So for the back of this one, because my fabric was uh, less than I really needed, I ended up just sewing a couple pieces together and I'll have a stripe on the back, but that's fine with me. No one's going to see it. That's probably the last one I'll get because of my hem. So there we go. So I'm just going to kind of tie this off in the back, make a little knot, and cut that off. All right. So there's my front. It's ready to go. Like I said, I kind of, I just sewed two pieces together. They're going to be just wide enough. So I am going to shut this down so you don't need to watch me go around. I'm really just going to lay these out on top of each other and sew all the way around. I leave an opening on the side. Typically I leave it on the bottom, but because I have two pieces of quilting fabric on the side, this time I'm going to leave my opening on the side because that way it will be easier to sew them up. Um, it's not as stiff. And then if I can put some trim on, you won't really notice. So I'm going to take a break and sew this around. All right, I sewed around my edges. I left my opening here on the side. Um, I'm going to trim up my corners. I just kind of, you know, cut some of the bulk out on all four. And sometimes, um, this was a thicker Ada so sometimes on my edge, I might try and cut some of this just look down so there's less bulk, especially by the corners. 
um, just to get them to lay a little better. So we'll turn it inside out and see how it looks. Uh, I use a corner corner tool. I don't remember what that's called. It's a quilting. It's a quilting tool um, for poking your corners out. And I know they sell them at one, two, three, and I'm sure they sell them at like um, craft stores. So once I get this turned right side out, I'm going to turn the camera off while I stuff it. Um, just because that would be very boring to have to watch. I do use, one thing I do a little different, I like to put yarn in my corners. So I will cut a piece of yarn about 18 inches and kind of wad it up in the corners. I, I feel that it helps them hold their shape a little better. Uh, the current yarn I'm using, I had to buy a new one and it was thick. Um, I just pulled it in, in half. I'll show you in a second. So there's, there's my piece. Here's my thick yarn. So I just kind of pulled strands off. I separated strands like you would for DMC. So I am going to press this so that my seams kind of lay nice and flat together. Stuff it, sew it up, and then come back on and we'll figure out what trim we're going to put on and I'll show you how to do that. But you can see the the X's are on there, they didn't get cut off, so it looks good. And then on the back, I matched it up so that both of my dots were on the same side and there's blue on the other. So I will take a break and be back. All right, last step. So here's our pillow so far. Uh, I stuffed the corners with the yarn, then I stuffed the whole thing with um, fiber fill. I like to use Mountain Mist Fiber Fill. That's their logo, Mountain Mist. Um, that's the one that Vana has always recommended and I, it works great. It's a little hard to find sometimes. Um, the last time I needed it, I ordered it from officesupply.com. Never ordered from them before, no problem. I got three big bags and a roll of stitchery tape, and that qualified me for free shipping. So um, I sewed up this side. It's pretty good, but I'm gonna cover it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then before I sew the pom-poms on, I pressed it with the iron, and that really, it kind of melts the fiber fill a little and gets it nice and a little on the hard side, which is fine with me. Um, I am using Lady Dot Creates Caribbean. That's the color I found that matched. I'm going to show you how I do it, but I'm going to tell you that Lindy Stitches, Stephanie Webb, did a fantastic pom pom tutorial, which I will link below. And that's how I learned to do pom pom. So I'm going to kind of show you like the beginning and the end, and then I would recommend if you need, um, you know, a little more in depth to spend some time with that tutorial. So the Lady Dot Creates is great because it comes off of this tape and then you have just the pom-poms which you can sew right up on the edge. And I do sew, I don't glue them, I just sew them on. So the way that you get them off there, sometimes they come off super easy. Sometimes they do not. Um, luckily, this was a super easy one. I started, and you can see my mess. So when you go in on your pom-poms, if you kind of separate them a little bit, you can see there's like a little thread. So the key is super sharp scissors. Go in there, kind of hook one of the threads, and cut it. Then you can go to the end, and as you kind of pull it down, that little thread comes undone. You can just grab it and pull it out, and it comes off. Now again, 
Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, this one was super easy. I can do longer pieces. Sometimes I'm doing them like one palm at a time and they're super annoying. Um, and if you miss like a little tiny fragment, because your scissors aren't sharp enough, it won't pull easy. Um, so, so that's that. I pulled a bunch. I probably have enough. So I will make you sit through that. This was like, I leave it all on there. I don't measure around the pillow first. I kind of just use it long. This happened to be a scrap I had in that bag. So I'm going to start on the bottom so that if there's a spot that doesn't look too good, it's on the bottom. I put some thread on my needle. It's just a single strand of sewing floss, regular cotton floss, not DMC, just regular sewing. So first I'm going to start by just kind of anchoring that somewhere along the bottom. I kind of anchored it into my fabric to make sure my knot's good enough and then I can trim that up after. So these get kind of fuzzy and stuff on the ends. So I'm going to leave like four pom-poms and start from there. So what you need to do, and it gets easier once you kind of get it started, is you're sewing over the little space in between. So you can see I just kind of pulled it over one pom-pom. Then I kind of go at an angle, and again, the first ones are always not the nicest. So now I went over this pom-pom. So then you can pull your thread <laughs> over the next one, which hopefully you can see, and go at an angle again. And once you get kind of in a rhythm, they get easier and your thread doesn't knot. I like to use a long thread so I don't have to change it, but it would be easier on myself if I would just use a shorter thread and change it. So I'm gonna stitch this around with the camera off and then we'll meet up again when I get down to this section. But you do wanna make sure, like you can kinda tell, like that's the back end, cause it's a little, can see a little of that ribbon. So you just wanna make sure that your pom-poms are lined up the right way. So I'm going to stitch around and I will meet up with you again when I get to this corner. All right, final step. I've made it to the corner. We're coming around the edge. Now we have to cover up. Now we have to make a meet up. So each of these palms, like I said, there's like the palm and then this little bit in the between connecting them like the tail. So what you want to do is cut one side right up by the palm and then cut the other side so that there's a tail so that they line up so I like to leave a little bit so that if I mess up the first time I can try again very sharp scissors <laughs> so I am going to I don't know how well you'll be able to see this I'm going to pull this little short end. You can tell this one on the end is already kind of fuzzy. I'm going to try and cut this by a palm. Not too bad. Sometimes they get all fuzzy. So I kind of cut that one by the palm. So then I line it up so I know which tail I need. My thread's down there. So I need this one right here. So then I have a tail and I have a palm. So then keep coming around. going around my palms 
And when I get up there, sorry if you can't see this, this is awkward to do on camera. This one I can sew right down over that palm. This is the one side with the tail. So I'm going to sew down over the palm. And then I'm actually going to try to just sew down right on that little tail. And I won't go at an angle for this one. I'll just kind of go right around it to try and hold it in place as best I can. Then I'm going to line up the other side. So they'll, they're pretty good. And again, try to go over these in a way that that stays in place. And sometimes once I get like, because we had left a couple, once I get those ones tied down, sometimes I'll go back over the section where they connect. I'll just turn it right around and go back the other way. Oops. Just to try and get them as good as I can. I also though try to not mess with them. <laughs> so I came off my needle, but that's pretty good. They're not like I can tell, but sitting in a basket, you'd be pretty hard pressed to tell. So I'm now just going to rethread this tiny needle. <laughs> My sharpest needle happens to have the tiniest little head. Um, I also wanted to mention when I said that I ironed it, I ironed it to kind of flatten it out a little. Um, I like to do that before I add the palms on because one time I did it after the palms and my palms melted. That's only happened to me once, but I don't want to take any chances of having to do them again, sewing them on again. Yeah. This may or may not thread. No. Um, basically all I'm doing now is tying a knot and tying it off, so you probably don't need me for that, but just to be official. There. So, uh, didn't even know what side was up. I go around to the back. I kind of go under the fabric a little. And I'm going to make a loop that I can tie a knot through to pull up. <laughs> and then I like to go down through the piece and up so that that way my extra is in the pillow. Oops. There we have it. So, there's my chick on an egg with my decorative stitch um, and my trim. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much for watching.